Hey guys, how's it going? Evan Schneider here. And today in this video, I wanted to share with you guys my favorite way of exporting raw clips as individual files using DaVinci Resolve. Now, a lot of times, maybe if you shoot weddings and the client either wants to see the raw footage, like for weddings, say you, you want to deliver the raw files to the client, there's a way in DaVinci Resolve to do it that is so easy and so fast, and it's actually, it actually has a lot of flexibility. So the first thing that you're gonna to want to do is download DaVinci Resolve. And the good part about that is that DaVinci Resolve is actually free. And if you've never used DaVinci Resolve before, um, I have a little quick start tutorial. I'll link it right up there. Even if this is your first time using DaVinci Resolve, I'm confident that you will be able to use it. The other really nice thing about this workflow is that um, you can use any footage to begin with and you can convert it to any other format. So it's a really easy and flexible process and it'll save you a lot of time. So let's get to it. All right, we are gonna go over here. All right, so we are here in DaVinci Resolve. I have made a new project and I'm about to import the footage into my project. So I've gone, I'm on the media page, I've navigated to where my footage is. Um, so you wanna navigate to wherever the folder is that your raw footage is in. And it's easiest if all of your raw footage is in the same folder, but you can also drag in uh, multiple folders into DaVinci. Um, so however you wanna do it. Um, but here I have a bunch of drone footage that I shot in Trinidad. Um, I'm just gonna use this as an example. But like I said, you can use any footage, whether it's red files or you know whatever imports into Resolve. So I'm going to select everything. I'm gonna hit Command A to select all. And then I'm gonna make a new bin down here in the media pool. I'm gonna call it um, raw footage. And I'm going to drag this down into the raw footage. Um, if you haven't imported anything, you're gonna see a warning um, that your clips have a different frame rate. Um, you wanna make sure you set this setting right off the bat because you can't change this once you set it. Um, so I know that this footage is, I think it's 24p, so that's good with me. So I'm gonna hit change. Um, if you want to check it, you can hit shift nine and that'll bring up your project settings. And in the master settings here, I can see my timeline frame rate is 23.976. And now that I've imported footage, um, you can't change this. So if I wanted to change this, I would have to delete the footage from the media pool, um, change this, and then bring it back in, and then make sure you don't hit the button that says change frame rate. Um, basically, like if you shot footage in slow motion, like at 60p, um, but you want your timeline to be 23, 24p, then you wanna make sure you set this first, and then you import your footage and click don't change. Um, so now that I have that set, that's good to go. Uh, once you have all of your raw footage in the same bin in your media pool, um, what you can do is you can select all in the media pool and then you're gonna right click and you're gonna hit create new timeline using selected clips. And this button, once you click it, it will take all of the clips and it'll stretch them all out um, into one track on a new timeline and I'm gonna title this timeline raw footage and hit okay. And then it creates a new timeline down here. So you wanna double click that. Now you can see I have all of my raw footage stretched out in one timeline um, all ready to go. So I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. And the next thing you wanna do is you wanna go back to your project settings. So you can go to file, project settings. Um, so your timeline resolution is going to be the resolution that you want your clips to export at. So if I wanted to export them at 4K, I could go to whatever resolution, either 4K DCI, or I could go to um, UHD 3840 by 2160, which is right here. Um, but for these, I'm gonna export them at 1920 by 1080. 
um, because say I want to deliver these to my client and just say, hey, here's the HD, um, H.264 versions for you that you can have. Um, and then the next thing you want to do is click on image scaling. Um, this feature is helpful because if you shot um, your footage at different resolutions um, or even different aspect ratios, like if you were shooting on red, um, you can use these settings to make sure that either you fill the frame or make it fit. So on input scaling, mismatched resolution files, um, if you want the um, entire frame to be filled no matter what the resolution of the clips were, you want to hit scale full frame with crop. And that's basically going to take any clip and it's going to scale it up um, to fill the frame, but it, if it has to, it'll crop either the sides or the top of the frame. Um, and then if you, uh, the other way to do it is to scale entire image to fit and that will scale the entire image to fit no matter what the resolution is. So if you shot something in widescreen and you're fitting it in an HD frame, it's going to have letterboxing on the top and bottom. So for this purpose, um, I don't really care. I just want it to be full frame. So I'm going to hit that and then I'm going to hit save. Nothing changed because the footage was already HD or it was already 16 by nine. So now that I have all of the footage set up in this timeline, um, I have two options from here. Um, one thing you can do that is really nice is that you can actually apply a color correction on top of all the footage if you wanted to, or you could go through individual clips and change them and adjust them, or you can go straight to exporting if you're in a rush and you want to do it quickly. Let's just say I want to apply a LUT on top of all these to make it look a little better. So I'm going to hit this drop down menu up here and I'm going to click on timeline to go to the timeline node graph and I'm gonna create a new node by hitting option S. And this is gonna bring up a node and then I'm gonna pull up my LUTs tab and I'm just gonna apply a LUT from my LUT pack, shameless plug. Um, I'm gonna apply the Integra 01 LUT from the Spectra pack and that'll just give the footage a nice look. Um, that looks pretty good to me and I'll just click through some of the clips to make sure that that LUT it's working well for all the different files and yeah that looks pretty good to me um, if you wanted to you can even add other correctors you can even go to individual clips by clicking on clip and then say I wanted to brighten this one up I could just give that a little bit of brightness in the midtones real quick um, so yeah you can do this to as many clips as you want or you can just leave it as is um, it's a really flexible workflow now that I've done all the color correction, I'm ready to deliver. So I'm gonna click on the deliver tab right here. Um, so right here in the render settings, what you wanna do is if you're exporting as H.264, um, there's a really nice preset right here called H.264 master. So I'm gonna click on that. And then this button right here, you wanna make sure this is clicked for individual clips. And so this will bring in the settings from my project settings. Um, but there also is a really nice button here that says render at source resolution. And so if you click this, it'll override your project settings and it'll render each clip at its native resolution that it was shot at. Um, so this could be nice if you're trying to convert footage to use as proxies for editing um, when you want to bring it back in later and color correct the raw footage, or you can uncheck this and it'll render everything at your project resolution, which for us is 1920 by 1080. Um, the next thing you want to do is make sure your audio is good. And then I'm going to go to file. And the next button you want to click is file name uses source name. And so this button um, will make sure that each clip is named the same name as the source, um, which is especially nice if you're creating proxies, because then you'll be able to connect them later on. If you have multiple edits of the same clip in the timeline, it'll add something to the end of it so that it doesn't overwrite that clip. Um, but if you want to just make sure, you can hit use unique file names and I would add a unique name using suffix so that everything stays the same. Um, you want to be careful using this if you're making proxies because then 
if you go back to connect them to the raw footage, it may not connect perfectly. Um, so I'm gonna uncheck that. Um, and then what you wanna do is hit browse and I'm gonna make a new folder just called raw conversion, create, and then hit open. And then once you do that, you want to add to render queue and then press start render. Now this is gonna render each clip as an individual file from your timeline and it's super easy. So if I go to finder and I go into that folder for raw conversion, you can see here that it is creating individual clips um, for each clip in my timeline. And if I double click it and open it, press info, you can see here that it's creating H.264 1920 by 1080 files and each one is the individual raw clip. They're super easy to play. Um, and yeah, it's just gonna keep doing this until it gets through all of the clips in the timeline and then I'll be done, ready to go. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. Make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can get notified of any new videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.